Hi everyone, it's Dave here from davestravelpages.com and this is day one of my cycling trip around Greece. It begins and finishes here in Athens and on day one I'm going to leave here from literally my doorstep, head down to Marathon which is about 40 kilometres away, take a look at some archaeological sites and then pedal on another 30 kilometres to my accommodation for the night. If you're interested in checking out the entire route then have a look at one of my previous videos which I'll link below as well. For now though I'll give you some clips from the road and some commentary. I will see you in a bit. Cheers! There. So I'm about 14 kilometers into the journey and that's my bike there and I saw this little coffee bike shop so I thought I'd stop by and actually this, uh, this route that I've just taken is quite a popular cycling route and it goes down from Athens to Marathon and this uh, cafe place will be at about the halfway point I guess. Uh, unfortunately it's closed so we can't see what's in there today but it seems to be like a bike shop stroke um, cafe. So I was going to get a cup of tea here or a coffee. But it doesn't look like it's going to work out that way. I like the door handle. And also the tea pigs, which is quite cool. Anyway, it doesn't look like I can have my coffee here, so I'm going to carry on cycling towards Marathon. So I'll catch you in a bit. Well, I stopped by the sanctuary of the Egyptian gods, but to be honest, it was a little bit underwhelming. So I stayed here instead and had a quick snack and had a drink. As you can probably tell due to the wind, which you're probably picking up on the microphone and the waves, it's quite windy here right now. And it's all blowing in the wrong direction, so that's quite good. But the, the cycling has been pretty easy so far. Uh, that's a, the bike I'm riding, which is the Stand 4 Skylander. And I'm going to be reviewing that as the trip goes on. So I'm going to go to the next place in Marathon now, which is the tomb of the Athenians. I'll speak to you from there. just make out a mound there and that is the tumulus or the two warriors. So this was from the famous Battle of Marathon which is where we get the legend of the Marathon runner from. Ran from Marathon to Athens to declare victory. I had originally thought it was um, to warn the Athenians of an invading force but that's not right it was to claim victory apparently. Maybe it's a myth maybe maybe nobody really knows what happened. So in the battle apparently 6,935 died and 192 Athenians who were buried in that tomb. I've not actually seen any reference to see if it's been excavated or not. Maybe we'll come across some signposts later on. Lots of olive trees around here. an olive look like when it's growing on a creek. I'm not sure if you can make out but the leaves have two different coloured sides as well. And there's a tomb in the background still. Obviously we're not allowed to climb all over the tomb because it's extremely disrespectful. But it's quite a nice pleasant place actually. There's a road over there but not much traffic. But in the way of things to see, I guess, but well, it is just the, just the tumulus really, so it's not the most spectacular archaeological site, but perhaps one of the more historic. So I'm 
inside the Archaeological Museum of Marathon, which I have to say is probably one of the least accessible museums in Greece. It's kind of tucked away several kilometres up a country road track, a narrow single track just through farmland. It's quite interesting when you get here. It shows the um, cemetery, explains a bit about the Battle of Marathon. And these are two grave sites in front of us, which are circular. So with uh, the visit to the museum over, I'm gonna try and find somewhere for lunch, head to Marathon Dam, and then finally head to my accommodation for the evening. I've just climbed up some of the hills um, from Marathon coming towards Marathon Dam and I'm not sure if you can see in the background I'm going to try and point my finger there well it's a distance away but anyway I think just over there is the sea I've got a few more hills to go as you can tell by the direction of the grass it's also a little bit windy and so it's more challenging than I'd first allowed for but still it's beautiful all the same so I'm gonna crack on and uh, get to Marathon Dam there we have Marathon Dam. I have to say, it's quite unusual to see this much fresh water in Greece. In fact, I think this is one of the largest freshwater areas I've seen in Greece. I know there's a few more to the north, and there's a one-way um, road system going across there. You can just see the traffic coming across the bridge now. So I cycled up to the hills to get here, and presumably I'm going to cycle down some hills on the other side, but we'll, we'll see if that actually happens or not. There was a little cafe behind me there as well. I've decided not to stay and to press on. Anyway, there we go. That is Marathon Dam. So then, that's the end of the first day's ride, and I'll show you around my room that I'm staying in whilst I'm talking. Uh, the ride was about 70 kilometres today, and there was a total elevation gain of 1,200 metres. So it was quite a tough one in the end. There was a side wind, temperatures got to about 36 degrees at the hottest part of the day, but it was very beautiful. Uh, I think passing over the dam was a highlight of the day because it was uh, yeah, it just looked very nice, all that sort of open fresh water take you out onto the balcony. I think I just missed the sunset, but I've got my own balcony there and there's probably just make out my clothes drying. As I mentioned, I need to wash my clothes every night because uh, I wanted to limit the amount of stuff I was taking with me. And there's the bathroom. So tomorrow then, I'm going to head to Thebes. I'm expecting an easy day tomorrow. It should be relatively flat, about 60 kilometers. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much for watching. Thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now. Good morning everyone, it's day two of the cycle ride. So I've just left the place I was staying at, and it wasn't exactly a hotel, it was kind of like a rural house. And they'd built something here in the countryside, like on a plot of land, they've retired out here, built a house. And I think they're just having guests to almost as much to keep themselves company as anything else really. Anyway, it's a really nice place to stay and they give me lots of like coffee and cake and things like that, so that's good. And now I'm gonna cycle about 60 kilometers towards Thebes. Uh, today should be a little bit easier, relatively flat I believe, but how many times have I said that and it's turned out not to be. And that's it, so I'm gonna give you some clips from the road. I think yesterday there weren't that many cycling clips, so I'm gonna try and give you some more cycling clips. Speak to you in a bit.
Hi there, I'm about two thirds of the way through the day and I've stopped here for lunch. And this is an abandoned, well, it would have been a roadside cafe or taverna at one point. And basically what happened is there's a road, which is this way, which you can probably just see a car moving. And that's the highway route one. And that's the route that I'm cycling on. And that was replaced by, and over there, the main highway, and that's a tollway. So most of the traffic goes onto the tollway now. Um, and although there's no cycling infrastructure as such in Greece, uh, this sort of old highway system worked very well for me. So I've just been following that along. Uh, what happened though, is a lot of the businesses on the side of the road closed down. So there would have been a lot of tavernas like this one and various other places, uh, petrol stations, that sort of thing, and they've all closed. But this is uh, a bit of a manufacturing belt here. So there's a lot of companies um, that are manufacturing goods for distribution throughout Greece. So I've got about 20 kilometers to go towards Thebes. And when I get there, I shall visit the Thebes Archaeological Museum, show you around a bit, and I will speak to you from there. Cheers for now. Hi everyone, it's Dave here from davestravelpages.com and this is day three of my cycle tour around Greece. I spent uh, last night here in Thebes in a hotel and in the afternoon when I arrived I visited the Thebes Museum which you can check out on the previous video. I think there's just some still photos on that. Uh, today's ride is going to be about 70 kilometres. I'm going to leave Thebes and head towards the coast. I've got another hotel booked on the coastline and I think actually from looking at it it's right on the beach which is pretty good. Uh, in terms of hotels, just to give you an idea of expenses, uh, this one was 30 euros for the night with four euros extra for breakfast. And the one on the coast is at the same price again, 30 euros. Uh, so that's all I've got to say. I'm going to give you some clips from the road as I cycle to the coastline. Speak to you in a bit. Hi there, I'm about 15 kilometres into the journey and I spotted this bus shelter which is in the shade. Uh, here in Greece, it's uh, like I said before, it's ranging between 30 to 36 degrees during the peak heat of the day. It's still not quite 10 o'clock so it's still reasonably cool, it's just about 28 degrees at the moment, so that's nice. I'm not too sure what these posters are about in the bus shelter but uh, I don't know, you can make your own conclusions about scantily clad men and they party somewhere. Who knows, it's very Greek. Uh, just gone through some farming land which uh, maybe you can see behind me uh, there's, a, there's a nice sealed highway and there's uh, fields both sides uh, behind me over here which you definitely can't see there's some mountains and those mountains I'm going to be cycling later because they're going to be the ones near Delphi uh, I'm expecting the road to turn around to the right shortly and then I'll be heading towards the coast uh, not much of a crosswind today I think the wind's dying down nicely and there's also not much traffic it's a bit of a strange time of year to do the cycling. Uh, it is obviously very hot at this time of year in August. So I personally wouldn't recommend people to come uh, on a bike tour in Greece in August. But you know, you've got to do what you've got to do sometimes. Uh, but the one good thing is most Greeks go to the islands for their holiday, which means that there's not quite so much traffic on the road. And in the inland towns, uh, there's quite a lot of accommodation. Some of the businesses have closed down. Uh, but they closed down for a couple of weeks while uh, everyone takes their vacation. Um, I'm heading to the coast myself now, so I expect that to be quite busy, although it's a small coastal town which uh, everyone that I've spoken to has never heard of, so, um, well, I guess we'll see when we get there, won't we? Anyway, that's it. I will see you in a bit. Cheers.
so that's the road ahead. Not sure if you can make out the top of those hills, but there's some wind turbines moving. Let's see if this will do. There you go. Can you see the wind turbines there? That's not normally a good combination for a cyclist, is it? A hill with some wind turbines on top. Anyway, hopefully the road goes around to the left and actually misses these altogether. Let's go over there, there's some arable here. And I'm hoping the road cleverly goes around those hills, but uh, we'll see what happens. Hi there, so that's day three over with, and I've finished by the sea, as you can see behind me. Uh, it was a 70 kilometre day, actually no it wasn't, it was an 80 kilometre day, and 1,200 metres of total elevation gain. Um, so it was, you know, reasonably challenging in places, but it's nice to finish somewhere with a beautiful view like this. You can see the palm trees behind me there, look. And the hotel right behind me there, I think that's the one, I think that's where I'm staying. It's a bit difficult to tell from this angle, no. That one, that's where I'm staying. Uh, so tomorrow I cycle towards Lamia. I'm actually cycling a little bit further than Lamia. And I'm gonna stay there for one night. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna um, see the uh, monument to the 300 on the way there, but we'll see. I need to add that into my route tomorrow. And then the following day is a tough day and that's going to Delphi. Anyway, that's it for day three. Uh, sorry if I'm squinting a bit, it's the sun, it's sunny, you know, it's bright, it's Greece. Catch you next time. Cheers for now. Hi everyone, it's Dave here from davestravelpages.com and this is day four of my cycling trip around Greece. I'm here in my hotel room in Livanetis, which is a coastal town in Greece. And I spent the night here, um, just had breakfast and it was an awesome breakfast. And I put a picture of that on my Facebook page. You should check it out because it was an awesome breakfast. Uh, today's cycling is going to be about 90 kilometers and I'm following the coast road uh, predominantly and I'm heading past a main city called Lamia and then I'm heading to a small town. Uh, now, as I've looked at the map, I'm thinking that uh, rather than being on the flat, that small town is, is probably gonna be up in the hills, which was a bit of an error on my part, but, uh, but never mind. It was, I think it was the only affordable co accommodation in the area at the time. So 90 kilometer day, um, the temperature's expecting to get to 36 degrees. I follow a couple of other cyclists that are cycling around the world on longer trips at the minute, and one of them is in Africa at the moment. I thought, wow, oh, check out the temperatures and see what they're coping with and it was just like 30 degrees, it was nothing. So uh, yeah, Greece is quite hot at this year. And as I was saying yesterday, maybe August isn't the brightest time to do a cycle trip in Greece, but if that's all the time you can do it in, then that's all you can do. So I'm gonna do the normal thing, give you some clips from the road, and I will speak to you in a bit. Cheers for now. So I've just stopped for a short break, uh, about 20 kilometers into the journey, and it's been reasonably flat so far. Uh, I've, I've gone from sea level and I've gone up again and down again, and now I'm by sea level again. Let me zoom out, because I think this is on a weird zoom. There we go. I don't know if you can just see there in the water, you can see that boy. In front of that, there's actually a guy swimming with his flippers on and a snorkel, and he's got a spear, um, spear in his hand, like so he's going spear fishing, and I guess the boy's there to stop um, boats from running him down, I guess. Anyway, this place is called Agios Constantinos, and it seemed like a nice enough place to take a break. And I'm just going to flip the camera around and then continue talking. There we go. You'd think there'd be a way to flip the camera around while you're talking, really, wouldn't you? But there's not. Maybe they'll do that. Samsung, are you listening? So why have I flipped this round? Ah yeah, I want to tell you about a cyclist I just met on the road. So whenever there's a cyclist on the side of the road um, who's got like a puncture or something, I always stop and just say, have you got everything you need? And normally they have, and then it just, uh, it's a short conversation and off I go. 
But in this case, all I got was kind of a grunt, yeah. And he might as well have said fuck off, but he didn't quite. And I thought, and this was a, like a bicycle tourist. So I don't really get that sort of attitude. I mean, everyone has a bad day when you're touring, but it doesn't hurt to have a short conversation, does it? Anyway, it won't stop me stopping for cyclists. But I thought I'd share that with you. So if somebody does stop for a chat, you know, think outside yourself and maybe talk back with them. You know, conversation's a good thing. Anyway, it is time to move on again. Hi there, so I've just stopped off at Thermopylae and this is the monument to Leonidas and the brave 300 Spartans who fought here. So you probably know the story of the 300. Even if you don't know it from the classical text, you probably know it from the film. But to give you an idea of, of why uh, the battle was important, you see over here, that's the mountains. So if you were trying to get an army through there, it would be difficult, and this is what the Persians faced. Straight in front of me here, in front of my hand here, is flat and then over to the right behind this monument is the sea actually the sea's a little bit further away than it was back in uh, back in the day 2500 years ago because um, the land has been reclaimed somehow but it would have been a very narrow gap so an ideal place to stop the army anyway that's really all there is to the monument but sometimes it's nice to put a place to the the places you've heard about or to visit the places you've heard about. So I think I'm going to take a bit of a break, have some water, and then proceed to my hotel for the evening, which I think is going to be up there somewhere, which is going to be a bit of a pain. So I'm hoping I can skirt around the tallest of the mountains and then uh, see what happens from there. But I'm sure I'll let you know. Cheers for now. Hi there, so that's day four of the cycling over and I've ended up in a place called Lutra which I think is famous for having some spas and some hot pools um, but that's not why I'm here. The reason I was here was because the price of this hotel was five euros less actually no that's a lie, it was ten euros less than in Lamia but what I didn't realise is that this is 25 kilometres outside of Lamia so okay I've cycled 25 kilometres to save ten euros was it worth it? Who knows? I've ended up in a triple room, you can see the three beds behind me there. Why a triple room? Again, who knows? Anyway, this room is 27 euros a night and it includes breakfast, which is pretty good. Uh, today's cycling then was, um, it was good actually. It was about 90 kilometers in the end and the total elevation gain was 600 meters. And I felt strong all the way through, which was pretty handy because tomorrow is actually the big day. So tomorrow's a real challenge. I'm cycling to Delphi. Uh, it's 100 kilometers in distance, which by itself is pretty good. Um, but I think there could be anything from 1,500 to 2,000 meters total elevation gain. Uh, it's going to need an early start, uh, not a lot to go wrong, and I'm probably going to need to eat and drink quite a lot along the way. So I'm actually, I'm psyched for it, so it should be pretty good. Uh, and that's all I've got to say. So I will catch you in the next video. Cheers. Good morning, everyone. This is day five of the bike tour in Greece, and this is my big day. So I'm going to leave here from Lutra and cycle to Delphi. And it's just over 100 kilometers, assuming I take the exact route that the map suggests. And I think there's gonna be something between 1,500 and 2,000 meters of elevation gain along the way. So it's gonna be a challenging day, but I'm pretty ready for it. Just about to go down for breakfast. Uh, last night's sleep was a bit weird. Now, I've traveled a lot, and during that time, in different rooms in hotels and wherever, there's, you, you just listen to people snoring, uh, you know, eventually. And there's all sorts of snoring. But what was coming from next door was the weirdest snoring I've ever heard. In fact, it was like so fascinating, I almost couldn't sleep, not because of the noise, but because of just how fascinating it was. It was, ah, uh, I think the, the, the memory of it will, will haunt me forever. I'm going to try and record it before I go because the guy is actually still snoring, even though it's like 7.30 now. Anyway, I'm going to go for breakfast and then I'm going to hit the road. Out of all the days on my trip, this is um, due for some rain. There's a 40% chance over three or four hours of some rain. 
I've got no rain gear with me. Um, I don't think it's going to be a major issue because the temperatures are still high. But I know in Greece when it rains, it can like properly rain. So uh, I guess I'll just have to see what happens um, when it does happen. And hopefully I'll be in a village somewhere eating in a taverna, eating a Greek salad or something healthy. Anyway, going to do the normal thing, give you some clips from the road. See you in a bit. Hi there, so I'm about an hour into the journey and 17 kilometers done and behind me you can see the mountains that I'm about to head up to. So I've managed to skirt around Lamia, which if I turn around you can probably see behind me there. You can see there's kind of a settlement in the background and that's Lamia. So I've neatly skirted around that, no worries. I was a bit concerned that along the dirt track um, there might have been a bridge down, but that's not the case. So everything has gone well. It's only a short section of dirt track, probably like a kilometre. Uh, nothing more than that. So I'm going to take some water on board and have a banana, because I like my bananas as I cycle, and then start heading up towards the mountain. So this is where things get tricky. You can probably also see that it's a little bit cloudy right now. And there's been a couple of spots of rain in the air, and it looks like at some places uh, it had also rained on the ground. Uh, but so far it hasn't rained on me. Um, well, I guess we'll just see what happens. The sun is trying to come out, but right now it's, uh, it's feeling pretty good. I think it's about nine o'clock. I'm not too sure exactly the time, um, but it's, it's early, so it's, it's not too warm yet. It's like just 27 or 28 degrees. So I'm gonna finish my break and carry on. Cheers. Hi there, so it's about uh, an hour 41 into the journey and I've done 27 kilometers which means, means I'm about uh, a quarter of the way through and the uphill is about to start. I've got one small concern because I'm going to be joining a main road soon and I'm not entirely sure if uh, the bike's slapped on there or not but it's a bit late now so uh, we'll see when I get there which obviously is at the end of an uphill. As you can hear in the background the dog barking as well. I'm obviously interfering with its territory. Uh, the rain is still kept off, so that's good. Just cycling up to Delphi and spotted the first blackberries of the season. Uh, let's see what they're like. Can we see that? Not exactly the juiciest blackberries in the world. I'm gonna have one or two anyway. So, I'll continue cycling. Well, as you can see, that's quite a view. And I've come up this road here. And basically I've come up from, you can see this road here. And then you can see the flatlands there. I've come up from the flat. Not too sure of the exact height at the minute. And maybe it's, I don't know, five or 600 meters. Maybe it's a bit more. Uh, I believe now that there's going to be a little bit more up and then a couple of down bits and it's going to kind of undulate for a while but we'll see what happens. The rain's held off and everything's looking good. So I'll get on with some more cycling. I don't know if you can just see the mountains behind me but I've just descended from there. I stopped off for lunch and had a, a Greek salad and from there it's pretty much all downhill which was quite nice because it meant I gained some distance and didn't really expend any energy. And then I kind of entered this bowl-like plateau area. And now I'm heading towards the mountains again. So Delphi, I believe, is the other side of these mountains. So I've probably got the same amount of ascent to make, which I've estimated to be about five or 600 meters. 
So, uh, it's not rained yet. The temperature's picked up because I'm lower. Everything's going well. Speak to you in a bit. As you can see from the scenery, you can imagine that there's been quite a lot of uphill. I think I've got about 35 kilometers left to go. I've got no real way of telling how much more up or down there is. But I guess we'll just see as we go along. So there's no arguing that the views are very spectacular. So it's been a challenging day, but I think it's quite rewarding. So literally after filming that last clip, I had a lovely section of downhill, which is quite nice. Uh, sometimes people ask me what it is I like about bike touring, and there's, there's lots of things that I like about bike touring. But one of the reasons I like it is the downhill sections, which I know is very simplistic. But I think I enjoy the downhill sections because you create everything about the moment. You put the passion and the energy into going uphill. You put, uh, you created that moment. And then when you come to go downhill, there's no greater feeling of freedom. It, it's difficult to explain, but the freedom you feel going downhill, knowing that you put all the effort into going up, it's, uh, it's, it's like a good reward. So you put in the hard work and then you get rewarded, which is, uh, yeah, which is what I like about bike touring. Anyway, no doubt there'll be an uphill section now and I can moan again, can't I? Speak to the bit. So according to the GPS, there's 12 kilometers left to go. I've had quite a long downhill section. Um, I can't believe that there's not going to be any more uphill, so there's bound to be. Um, with that in mind, it's probably about an hour, maybe it's going to be an hour and a half to two hours cycling left until I get to Delphi. At this stage, it seems unlikely I'll actually have time to visit Delphi itself. And I kind of knew that when I planned the route because I was, I was tight on time. For me personally, it's not a major issue because I've visited Delphi before. Um, but if you were going to do this route, then I would suggest obviously leaving enough time to actually see the site. That said, you never know, maybe I'll get to see it tomorrow morning. But if I don't get to see it on this trip, I'll include some photos in the video from the last trip. It's kind of cheating, but hey, you know, what to do. Uh, today's cycling has been really enjoyable and it hasn't rained. And yeah, yeah, this is, this is what the tours, touring's all about. Yeah, I'm really liking it. Speak to you in a bit. Here's a look at some of what I've cycled up. I basically cycled up from sea level, which is over there. Quite strange to think that I've almost gone from one coast to the other in kind of, well, about 10 hours, I think. About three kilometers to go now. So that's the end of the day's ride. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit hot and sweaty. That was 103 kilometers and a total elevation gain of 2000 meters, which I think is pretty good going. So I'm here in Delphi now. As I said, I'm not too sure if I'm going to get a chance to actually see the site or not, but I'll see what I feel like in the morning. If I think I've got time, I'll pop in. Um, for me, though, it was the challenge of, um, of doing this section, in a way, just to see if I'd still got it, which I do. Um, but for now, I'm going to have a shower, going to have a feed, and then get some rest. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now. Hi there, so this is day six of the bike tour here in Greece, and today I'm going to leave Delphi and then cycle towards Thebes. Now Thebes I've already visited on this bike tour because I'm doing a loop, I'm going back there. Um, I'm not gonna have time to see Delphi today, which is, in a way it's a bit of a shame, but I have visited the site before. So what I'm gonna do probably after this segment is include some um, photos that I've taken when I was there before, which is kind of cheating. I guess if I had to plan the tour differently and I had time, which I didn't on this particular occasion, I would have chosen Delphi as my day off place. Uh, the accommodation, because there's so much of it here, I was quite competitively priced. Um, this place was 20 euros a night and it would have been a chance to kind of rest up for a day. Uh, I could see the site, um, probably sort of wash my um, Endura Humvee shorts, which haven't had a wash yet for six days now, so you can imagine what they're like. Um, but uh, as I didn't have time, that wasn't the case. I think what I'll do is at the end of the tour, I'll put on a video of things that I 
took with me and didn't need, things that I didn't take with me and could have done with, and also uh, things I would have done differently about the tour. Maybe just like a summary, because all this will be in a playlist about the tour anyway. So the first destination of the day is a town called Arakova, and that is kind of a touristy town. It's quite a pretty town, but it's also reasonably touristy. So I'm gonna go there, it's only about 11 kilometers away, but I have no idea of what the terrain's like. So if there's a lot of up and down, uh, it could take me two hours to get there for all I know. Um, and then at some point there is gonna be a long downhill section as I head down towards the plains and then cycle towards Thebes. So, as usual, I will give you some clips from the road. Thank you. The sanctuary of Delphi is behind me, which you can't see because they've grown all these trees in the way, almost deliberately, you would think. There is another smaller site. Uh, I'm going to see if it's worth going down into that. I don't really have the time, unfortunately, to spend uh, an hour or two hours at the main site of Delphi itself. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a lovely day. It's a very kind of calming place, this, surrounded by the, the mountains, which you can see behind me here. So let's go on with it. Hi there. So amazingly, you can see neither of those sites from the side of the road, almost like it's been done deliberately. But as I said, I've visited them um, before, um, so I'm going to include some pictures here if I've not already, because I have no way of knowing how I'm going to edit this video. Um, as a, and also, as I said, it's definitely worth spending at least a half day here, in my opinion. And because I've got the, uh, because I live in Greece, I've kind of got the luxury of coming back whenever I want. So uh, maybe I'll come back, you know, in a couple of months' time and and spend some time at the site because uh, I quite like my archaeolo archaeological sites. For now, though, I'm going to continue cycling uh, because this trip is more about the cycling um, to a certain degree because it's uh, you know, I want to get outside and get fit and get some exercise. So I'm going to carry on cycling now to the town of Arakova. So I was just cycling up the road and on the side of the road near a lay-by there was kind of, well it's not signposted but there's a kind of like a ruined little building so I thought we'd go and check it out and this is it behind me so you can see the block work you see those sort of size blocks all over Greece in the buildings. Sometimes they're part of defensive walls. And with that, um, you know, what do you call it, Tri triathlon? Who knows what it's called? Anyway, uh, the, the thing above the door. So yeah, no idea what this little building is about. I can go inside it and have a look. It's obviously not a modern thing, and it's very small. Maybe it is a modern thing, I don't know. Maybe some uh, some farmers only 500 years ago threw this together to make a little house out of it. Doesn't look like that though, it looks like it's a little bit older. It's just weird that there's no sort of signpost for it or marking as to what it is. Anyway, let's hit the road again. Okay, so if you just make out these houses, but that's the beginning of the mountain village of Arakova, or Arakova, sorry. So I'm just going to cycle up there. From memory, there's a um, like a main road that goes through, and there's probably a cafe or two there as well. So hopefully, I'm going to get a frappe. It's a bit of an overcast day today. Uh, everything's been pretty much uphill. And it's taken me just over an hour to do the nine kilometers so far to here. Hopefully when I get to the top, I can show you a better view. So I've just stopped off at the beginning of Arakova and I thought I'd take in the view. And that is the view, which I think you'll agree 
is a pretty good one. Even though it's a slightly overcast day and the sky is not the clearest, I think you can appreciate it for what it is. Today's been pretty much all uphill so far for this first hour and a bit. About 10 kilometers uh, I've done now uh, to get here to Arakava. Um, it's difficult to see where I've come up from, but if you follow the finger in the distance over there, uh, that's at least sea level over there, if you can just make it out. So in two days I've come up here. Difficult to know how high I am at the minute. I'd guess about 800 meters to 1,000 meters. Maybe I'll Google it and find out for sure later. Anyway, I think it's time to go and find somewhere that sells coffee. Just cycling on towards Thebes and I've come across this which I'm assuming is a war memorial but let's go and check it out. If it's in Greek I'm probably not going to be able to help you out as to what it's about of course but hopefully one of our Greek viewers can leave some information on the video for us. So my assumption is that because of the date, and it's a specific date, this must have been to do with a battle, maybe, resistance. It's quite a big monument. And again, not too sure what the graffiti is, but again, maybe one of our Greek viewers will be kind enough to translate that and leave that in a comment below. So I wander back over to the bike and continue onwards. We've got about 30 kilometers left. The traffic's picking up a little bit now, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but there we go, it's to be expected as I head towards a bigger city. As you can see, the traffic goes past pretty fast as well. Um, yeah, it's been a fairly easy day, apart from that first hour, which was uh, uphill. And uh, now it's, it's relatively flat, I'm getting some good speed, and there are obviously some downhill sections. Although I say to myself that I'm actually feeling stronger if I go fast, and it's not downhill at all. So, 30 kilometers left, I'll speak to you probably from Thebes. Hi there, so that's the day cycle ride over and done with. And I've arrived back here in Thebes at the same hotel I was staying at before. The owner recognized me, gave me the keys and said, there you go. Uh, I'm in a different room, not that that's important to you, but I thought I should mention it anyway. So it was a 92 kilometer cycle ride and there was about 1,200 meters of elevation gain along the way. I was just taking it easy really. Uh, stopped off a couple of uh, times to have something to eat. The last time was about five o'clock, so I had an early evening meal. Uh, along the way, because I've, I've been working as I've been traveling on the bike, and I've been trying to do everything for my phone, I've been checking emails and making a couple of deals along the way. And one of them is really good. So just today, it looks like I finalized being invited to Spain to do um, a cycling thing for a week to help promote one of the regions there. So I'll talk more about it when I know more. And if you've signed up for my newsletter at davestravelpages.com, I'm sure I'll let you know through that. And obviously I'll make some videos if it all happens about some cycling in Spain, which sounds pretty good. Uh, back to this tour though, I've got one day left and tomorrow I cycle to Athens. Uh, I was gonna go into the historic center and then to my house, but I'll see how I feel. I think in my head, I'd like to kind of get back for five or six o'clock. And if, if I can get the historic center done by that time and get back home for five or six, then great. 
If not, it's there for next time. And again, because I live in Athens, I can go into the centre all the time. So, and if you guys are really interested in some videos at the centre, leave a comment below and I'll go and take the camera down there one day and film lots of stuff for you. Is there anything else to mention? Uh, one more thing, yeah. When I got here in Thebes, I noticed that I have been bitten everywhere. So I think it happened last night, the hotel I was staying with, because I kept waking up at like two o'clock or four o'clock. And uh, I'm sure uh, there was a couple of things flying around the room biting me. And today the bites have really come up and it's got me good. It's got me really good. And it made me think, I don't think I've ever done a bike tour and not been bitten. So maybe if I do a bike tour and don't get bitten once through it, that might be my sign to like retire from cycling. Probably never gonna happen. Anyway, thank you much, very, thank you much, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you liked it, thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, why not, you know? And I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now. So here we go then, it's the last day of the tour. There's about 90 kilometers to go from Thebes to Athens. I've chosen a route which takes me kind of around the centre a little bit. Uh, I've decided against visiting the historical centre and instead I'm going to head straight for home. Uh, I think 90 kilometres should see me get there for about 5 or 6 o'clock. As normal, I'll give you some clips from the road and maybe even go over the bike a little bit as well. So I'll speak to you in a bit. Cheers. So I'm about an hour into the journey and most of the journey has been on this single uh, single lane road which you can see here. Uh, the only thing is the cars go reasonably fast which isn't a major problem. The problem is, is when you get a lorry coming in one direction and the lorry behind you so they're going to pass you at the same point uh, things get a bit tight and as you can see the side of the road is just dirt really and there's only a very small track to cycle on. So it's been alright so far. I'm about to join the main road, um, or sorry, the, this road is about to join the main highway and I suspect at that point a lot of the traffic will disappear onto the tollway. So let's just have a quick look at the bike. Everything's gone really well with the bike, um, I really like everything so far. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no complaints at all really. The only one small niggle that I've got is with the seat uh, and obviously the seat which comes with the bike is optional anyway uh, and this is I believe a Brooks Cambrian saddle. It's a C, uh, C17 and what this is is like uh, an artificial material equivalent of the famous Brooks B17 saddle. Now I'm probably going to do a full review in this and I've tried all this it looks at a weird angle by the way at the minute it's tilted slightly up I've tried all angles to get this to work, uh, to get comfortable, and it's just not, it's just not happening for me. Um, the, the leather saddles I find are, are far more comfortable for me. Some people have mentioned that they're not very durable, but I've not found that to be the case. Uh, so far, uh, this saddle, yeah, like I said, I'm not really getting on with it, so I will probably um, swap that out for a B17 when I take the bike out for another tour. Uh, as I said, the saddle with the bike is optional anyway, and in fact it probably comes with a B17 as standard. Uh, what else is there to say? Not, not a lot really, I mean nothing's, I mean you can only really comment when something's gone wrong. If everything's working perfectly, there's, <laughs> there's nothing to, to really comment about. Um, the 700 wheels are ideally sized for this tour, um, it's mainly road touring. I've only had about 5% of the time on, on dirt tracks if that, and you know, it's just adequate on the, on the dirt track. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it really. I mean, it's just a it's just a bike. It does a job. I mean, personally, when I'm on a bike tour, I don't really want to think about the bike at all. I just prefer to turn the pedals and get on with it. I don't really want to be listening to like a clanking sound and wondering what the problem is. And as this hasn't got any clanking sounds, I guess we can call it a good bike. I am going to do a full review and go through the specs for this, um, which will be out of find in this playlist later on the YouTube playlist. Uh, for now I'm just going to finish having some water and then continue my journey on.
So why would somebody build a fake castle here? Who knows? One of life's little mysteries that will have to go unsolved. So I'm just entering the outskirts of Athens now. The traffic's definitely going to pick up a lot now, so I probably won't have time to film and I just need to concentrate on, uh, on getting back really.